So now it's time to build the backend for this application. So we got the front end ready and we have talked about it in the last session or in the last video. But now let's build the backend. So I don't want this match message which says something went wrong. Let's make it work. Okay, so when you say backend, how do we do it? It's very simple. We have done this before. We have to create a Spring Boot web project, a new project. We don't want to make changes in the older one. So I will say Maven project, Java, uh, the version remains same. The group ID is as usual, com.therisco. The project name, the artifact ID, uh, I will want to make it as ecom project. I will say one, uh, okay, let's say ecom project. We'll make, keep making changes in the same project. And uh, the jar packaging, the Java version 21. Now it's time for the dependencies. Now, since this is a web spring web project, I will need web. I don't want to create a ref repository here the way we have done in one of the video is because I want some customization. So I will prefer web. Uh, the next thing is I want database connectivity as well. So I will say JPA is needed. Uh, next, I will need uh, dev tools for the fast reload and Lombok also. Let's try Lombok. Something went wrong last time when we tried it. If it doesn't work, we'll remove it. Uh, and okay, what else we need? Uh, H2, database is also required, right? So I will say H2. Of course you can use a uh, database like Postgres or MySQL, that's your choice. I'm using H2 here, which is lightweight for our use. So we got Spring Web, we got Data JPA, we got DevTool and Lombok and H2, only these five dependencies. With this, I will click on generate, it will give me the project. And you can see we got the project here. So I will just unzip it and open that in IntelliJ IDEA. Okay, so this is the project which we have to open. This is what we have downloaded. And now I'm opening this in IntelliJ IDEA community version. So I will click on open and uh, it's here. Okay, so basically this is your blank project. Of course, nothing is there. And the port number, which is by default port number is 8080. And even before making any changes, I want to check if that port is empty so that I can use it. Uh, so what I will do is I will just open this main file. Nothing changes, right? It's a simple project. Uh, it might not work is because in H2, we have not specified a data, data source, but let's see if without data source, does it work? So running this and, okay, it's running, great. And it's running on port number 8080. This is what I wanted. So we are good. Uh, port number 8080 is working and now we can make the changes. Now, what are the changes I want to make? First of all, of course, I want a database. So I will just make sure that I have the properties for database. Uh, so the first thing we have to set is the URL. So I will say spring dot data source dot URL is equal to JDBC colon, we're using H2 colon mem colon. Uh, then we'll mention the database name. So I will, I will still go with Telisco database. Uh, next, I want to specify is the driver class name. So I will say spring dot data source. And we have done this before. So we can just directly use it. Driver class name, it is org dot h2 dot driver. Perfect. Now, what are, whatever the things happens uh, with the JPA, I want to see the query as well. So I'll say spring dot JPA dot show SQL. I'll make this true. Apart from this, uh, there's one more thing, right? So who is responsible to create a table in the database? So basically in the JPA world, the JPA takes care of creating a table. So there are multiple options there. When you say you, JPA should create a table, uh, we have an option of create, which will create every time you run this, or it will update. So if the table is already there, it will simply update it. In the terms of H2, we don't need to set that, but if you are using Postgres or MySQL, which is permanent database, uh, we need to set it to update. So I'm doing it so that if you want to use it for Postgres or MySQL, uh, you can use that. So I will say spring.jpa.hibernate.ddl auto. Let's keep it to update so that it will not create every time you restart the application. So I think we are good. Uh, everything looks good. These are the properties we have to mention. Now, once you have your properties ready, what's the next thing you will do? So of course, now we have to create the controller, the service layer and the repository layer, right? So we'll do that step by step. But there's one important thing, the model. How will you represent your data, which is a product? So basically now we need to represent how your product will look like. So what exactly, when you say we have an e-commerce website, we have multiple products, what are the details we need in a product? Of course, there are multiple properties will be there. One of them is image, but let's not use image now because it's a complex topic. So in the upcoming videos, we'll see how do we work with images as well. But at this point, just to keep it simple, the things which I need is ID. So the first thing is ID, which is also your primary key for the table. Uh, then we'll name a name of a product. 
So we'll need a name of the product. Uh, I will also need a description for the tape for, for the particular particular product, a long description. We we, do, we don't want to show that on the home page or the first page. But let's say if you see if you want to see about a particular product, in that case I want to see the long description. Uh, so that should be here. So these two things will be string. This is also going to be same string. Uh, then uh, I need the brand of the product. Let's say if we talk about a car. So let's say if I if I drive Expresso, which is Suzuki. So that's the brand. Then also the most important thing is price. Every product needs a price there. So this will be integer. So brand will be string but this will make it integer. Then also, uh, we might want to categorize the products, right? Based on, is it a toy? Is it a car? Is it a lab, I mean, electronic device? So in that case, I want a category as well. And on which day it got released? So I don't want to do anything with the release date, but let's say in future, if you want to sort by which product came first and which is the latest one, uh, you can do that with this. Now for this, we are going to use date, uh, Bit tricky here is because by default the date format will be uh, US format. We want to use the Indian format, which is DDMM YYY. Uh, so we'll see how do we do that. And also, if the product is available, of course, a lot of properties, but you have to just define them once. So availability, uh, which will be Boolean if it is true or false. And the last one is quantity. How much, how many, how much quantity we have that product in our stock, right? So. This is something we'll keep as int, category will be string. So these are the properties we'll need. Apart from this, we'll also need image, but at this point, I don't want to put image and we'll put, put a question mark there, but we'll work with image data. So we'll update our product uh, class and we'll add image there as well. But at this point, I want all these properties. So let's create that. So the way you can do that is the first thing you need different packages. So I need a model package. Then uh, let's get all the packages here. Just making our project set up properly. We need the controller. Oh, I created a class. So I need a controller package. Then I need the service package. Then I need a repo package. Okay. Uh, again, for repo, you can say it's a DAO. Or you can say repo, repository. You can use different names there. Uh, I'm using a repo here. And in the model, basically I have to create a product. So I will say, in fact, before I do that, I want to make sure one more thing, if I'm getting the output on the page. So what I will do is I will create a simple controller here. So I will create a class and I will call this as a product controller, simple stuff. And on this controller, I will say this is rest controller and request mapping. By default, every request should be passing from API. Uh, so the URL will be localhost colon 8080 slash API slash whatever you mentioned in the methods. So now I want a simple method which will greet me. So I will say, I want someone to greet me, right? So I will say greet, return, hello world. Now when this will be called, so whenever there's a request for home, so it's a request mapping. This is for the home request. Okay, this is what I want to return. If this works, then we'll continue, right? Otherwise, if this is not working, then we have to uh, debug what is going wrong. So let's do this step first. So it's running the project and how do I check it? Of course, I will. I can do that from the uh, postman or let's use a browser. So I will hit this URL, but without products. I just want API enter and we got hello world. So this is working, right? At least our uh, spinning application returning something. But I don't want hello world. Of course, when I say products, if it is products there, it should return the products, which is not there yet. So I will create the controller later. But what I, what I want to do now is create the model. Let's complete that first. So I will say class. I want a, what went wrong? Uh, I will say new class product. Now in this product, I want all those properties, right? And I also want to use a long box. So I will be using that. So I'll say private int ID private string name, what else we have description, so private string description, private string brand, we also need price, private in price, then we got categories, so I will say private string category, uh, then we got release date. So I will say private. In fact, price should not be int. It should be big decimal because the price can be any big amount, right? Uh, so let's be, keep it big decimal. And here we'll say date, uh, release date. We have to import the date. So I'll say control space from util. Yes. And big decimal came from math. Okay. 
release date then what i want i want available and quantity so i will say private in quantity okay so so many properties right and i don't want to create get us just for this so i'm go i'm going to use lombok so on top of it i will say data and i also want all arguments constructor and no arguments constructor that's it so this is basically the product which you got now will this work of course not uh, if you want to get the table one thing you have to do is you have to create this as entity because jpa needs entity and on top of id we have to say add rate id right that's your uh, primary key cool looks good right but will this work uh, of course you cannot send request from the client is because the control is not ready we don't have products controller uh, but at least i want to see the table in the h2 database so we'll just refresh this to see if something happens okay there's no error and if you can see it is also creating a table so it says ta uh, create table product and you got available uh, brand category description so it goes in alphabetical order and that's why if you can see the sequence is not matching we got first uh, the primary key which is the id then it starts with this uh, alphabetical one a b c d n p uh, then quantity release date and then primary key which is the id okay so uh, these are the things we need and uh, how do you verify this it's very simple you can just go to your console h2 console so you can say localhost 8080 slash h2 console and we have not set the username password so default will be sa and uh, no password click on connect and you can see we got a product table which has all these values of course data is not there but how we are going to load the data let's see that in the next video so basically in this video we just make sure that we have our structure ready for the project which is ready here and uh, the database is empty we'll add the default data some data to start with and yeah looks good we don't have a controller service ready so let's do that in the upcoming videos so at this point we have done with this structure and the product class see you in the next video bye bye